Okay, so now that we know how to select pieces and move, rotate, and scale them around to edit them, let's look at how we can use Moto's action centers, symmetry, and falloffs to do um, a more complicated change of our current geometry. First, let's start in the middle and look at the symmetry tool. We can use symmetry on any axis. Um, in this case, we'll look at the x-axis, where if we click and drag on one side, we'll see that we're getting the mirrored selection on the opposite side. This can be very useful on working on any model that's symmetrical, and many things are. Automobiles offer it in the exterior, for the most part, are symmetrical. The human face is roughly symmetrical, and we can get a good start by modeling this way for, um, for humans' uh, faces or bodies or um, a lot of other uh, creatures that you may want to model and a lot of other things like chairs, airplanes, tables are roughly symmetrical on one axis or another so we can use this to be able to do half the work and let Moto do the rest. So for right now we're going to turn off the symmetry though and let's have a look now at falloffs. Now let's say we wanted to take this cylinder and we wanted to pull it out Oops. We wanted to pull it out so that it tapered off towards the top. Wider at the bottom, more narrow at the top, and look more like, say, a vase. And if we had to select each individual row of edges and make those scaling changes, it would become very cumbersome and very difficult to get looking smooth. So what we can do is use a fall off to achieve that same effect. Falloffs can be based off of a number of things. Um, right now we'll look at the linear one, but we can also base it off of a cylinder, a radial style, which is a um, kind of a 3D sphere of falloff. You can airbrush in and do a lot of other things to, to use a falloff, but you can get the basic idea by looking at the linear falloff. So if I go over here to um, my right view, I'm going to just click and drag down and we'll see that it's creating a falloff. The wide end of the falloff means that any tools that we use will take full effect on anything in that range and the narrow point where it comes to a point means that it will take zero effect. So now if I were to use the scale tool and I'll look here in the top view and pull out, we can see that it is tapering this off. Now, we might not want this to move down you know, so evenly like this, so there are a couple of different things that we can do to change this. Um, we can use ease in, ease out, or smooth. So we can look ease in, will cause it to round outward, ease out, will cause it to round inward. Smooth will be a bit of a mixture of the two where it will slowly um, increase and slowly decrease at the ends. And then there is also the custom option. When we choose custom, we'll see that these two um, in and out parameters have now become active and we can change the amount of offset that we have in each of these up to one positive and one negative and in conjunction these two can allow us to get a relatively precise um, flow for our fall off. So let's say that's not quite what I'm looking for. I'm going to pull these up to both of them to positive one, I think. Yeah. And then, should we decide we actually want it to be wider on the top or we want the fall off to take more effect on the top, we can always reverse the direction of the fall off with this key. But for right now, I'm going to leave it as is and we'll call that a deal. Now, if we hit the Q key, that will drop a tool. Any tool that we have, move tool, scale tool, rotation tool, or any of the other modeling tools, the Q key will drop the tool. However, if we have other things in our tool pipe, which we talked about here previously, um, those won't be dropped by hitting the Q key. If we hit the escape key, it will then clear out everything in the tool pipe and we'll be ready with a blank slate again, um, ready to go. And the last thing we'll look at is action centers. Now, action centers allow us to edit a model or a piece of a model based off of something other than simply the area around it. Like if I were to hit the move 
key, the, the move tool, the W key, you can see that it has centered itself roughly in the middle of our selection and that the handles align themselves to the world plane. Now this might not be what we want. We might want to move it specifically to our selection that we've created. And so we can go to selection and we can see now it is not only centered on our selection, but it is aligning itself with the average of the surface normals for our selection. So it takes the direction that each of these is facing and it averages them out to give us something that will allow us to move straight out or straight away from our current selection. We can also do the same thing with the selection border and for the case of this selection it won't make any difference since our border is going to have the same uh, the same uh, surface normals and will have the same overall position um, as you know, the, the previous regular selection view uh, it won't look any different now but if we were to select part of a closed loop so say we were to select the bottom and then select up if we use the selection action center will see that it centers itself in the middle but if we use the selection border you can see it's taken essentially the open end of our selection set and it has centered itself around it or in this case around this edge loop right running through here and it's not only centered the um, the position of the of the action center but it's also um, centered the, the orientation of the action center around that. We can also make a selection where it is aligned to the center of our selection but where the orientation of our transformation will be aligned to the world plane and that would be the selection center auto axis. Um, and we'll cover one more here because it's one that, um, or actually two more because they're ones that are used quite frequently. One is the element and with this active we can see now we're again getting the active view of polygons, edges, and vertices. And that's because if we click on, say, this vertex, it will center up our action center with that vertex. Similarly, if we click on this polygon, it will center it up to that or an edge. And that way we can move one set of polygons, points, or edges based off of the position and orientation of another. Finally, let's have a look at if we have these, say, these four polygons and we want to be able to move them all relative to their surface normal, we can use the local action center. And then when we move, we'll see it only aligns to one, but it will move each of these based off of their own surface normal. You can see they're not all moving in the same direction, they're all moving in their own direction based off of surface, based off of their local surface normal. Okay. And the other nice thing about the action centers is that we have the freedom to kind of create our own. So at any point we can change the way that the point where the center is chosen by selecting one of these which correspond to the ones that we've already talked about. And then we can also change our axis based off of you know, the other versions here. So if we have something selected around our center, or around our selection, rather, but then we want to move it based off of an element, or we want the, excuse me, the alignment to be based off of an element, we can do that. And then if we go click on something over here, we can see it's still centered around our our selection but that the orientation of our movement is now based off of that other element which we have selected. These can be very very powerful when creating more complex models and even for creating simple models as we'll see in later tutorials when we start to create some uh, some simple shapes and then as we move in to create more complex ones. So that gives you an overview of uh, these three very powerful options, the action center, the symmetry, and the falloff tools.